This video is about the amino acid's backbone. Specifically, it's about the chemical structure of the amino acid, basically what it is. So here we have a little analogy to think about the backbone um, of a vertebrate, maybe a human. Um, and if you think about that backbone, then there are many little units here that are all in a row, um, and they're connected to each other. And just like that, in a polypeptide chain or a protein, we have many small units that are all in a row, and they're connected to each other. These small units, um, each is an amino acid, and so we're going to zoom in really close to learn about the chemical structure here. Here's some vocabulary you should know. Um, and then here's an SLO that you should be able to look at. By the way, when you see this as basic, it means like not the charge basic, like a positive charge. It means like the, the actual core structure, uh, which is basically right here. Okay, so now we're going to build the amino acid structure. You should be able to draw and label this structure for an exam. And it looks kind of complicated and kind of a big pain to start out with, but I'm going to walk you through a strategy for how to do it, and I encourage that you do it the same way or come up with your own strategy. So basically, amino acids, just like all macromolecules, have carbon at the center of them. And as you know, carbon can form up to four bonds. Um, so we're going to build it like this. Um, and basically, um, from carbon, there's going to be two different functional groups um, that are the same always. One of them is the amino group. The other is the carboxyl group. I would encourage you to draw them this way each time. There is also going to be a variable group called the R group. And this could be a collection of different atoms or functional groups. Um, it could even be very simple like a hydrogen. And then that seems like kind of a lot to keep track of. So for the last position, we're just going to put a hydrogen. And so basically this structure here, this is the amino acid structure uh, that you should have memorized. You should also know what the amino group is and what the carboxyl group is and be able to draw those out. Also notice if you're having a hard time remembering which um, functional groups go here, I mean, number one, you could just memorize it. But remember, we're talking about an amino acid. So here we got the amino group. So that's a little hint right there. Carboxyl groups act like acids in water, uh, which may or may not help you remember that, uh, but basically that's another part here. Okay, so now we're going to look at the chemical structures drawn out, including all the atoms within each of the functional groups. And so here you can see, and you should know it drawn out like this, that the amino group um, has NH2, and so that's shaded here as one functional group. Um, we see our central carbon, we see the R group or side chain, then we see another functional group here that's shaded, that's the carboxyl group. And so this all looks very familiar, um, and this is a, a very reasonable way to draw an amino acid. You should also recognize that in reality, in the cell, it's always aqueous, and so the fact that this uh, molecule is in water means that a couple hydrogens are going to get moved around, and that's going to impact um, a positive and negative label on this um, amino acid. Uh, so this is basically what an amino acid looks like in water. Basically, the um, amino group, this picks up a hydrogen, and then this um, leads to a positive charge, plus, plus one, which you can see right here. Um, and so this is the, the best way to draw this. If I ask you to draw what it looks like in an aqueous or water-based solution, you should draw this whole structure here. Um, and then on the other side of the story here, if we look at the carboxyl group, this is going to lose um, a hydrogen. And so then it's going to uh, become a negative charge. An important thing to notice here is that every single amino acid has this exact same structure. So even though um, sometimes we want to keep track of the charge of the amino acid as far as what category it is, we are, in that case, only referring to the side chain. So you ignore the charges that are here and here. Um, so you need to recognize that this is part of the backbone of the amino acid. One reason why these charges don't matter is we're going to see very soon that these actually are the um, chemical groups that are going to get rearranged again when peptide bonds form um, as this makes a long chain. And so for now, notice that in a lot of the drawings that you'll see that you're going to see a positive charge and a negative charge um, on, um, in those positions, and those are not going to impact the overall charge of the amino acid. 
Okay, so here's an example of an amino acid. This is the most simple amino acid that is um, in cells. And basically, what I want you to do is to be able to look at the structure here. I want you to be able to label the amino group, the carboxyl group, um, the hydrogen, and then I also want you to be able to label the R group. So take a minute and pause the video and um, try that right now. Okay, so now I'm going to label those, and so basically, um, here we have the amino group, and here we have the carboxyl group, and then there's two hydrogens left, which is kind of weird. We know that one of the hydrogens, and we usually draw it in the um, top position, this is just our normal old, normal old hydrogen, and then down here, where we would normally draw an R, instead we just have a hydrogen, and that's kind of weird. But because this is a super simple amino acid, the most simple amino acid that there can be, this is actually the R group in this position here. So instead of having like a fancier uh, functional group, or other uh, more complex structure, we just have a glorious hydrogen in the R group position. This particular amino acid happens to be called glycine. You don't have to have that memorized, uh, but that's the name of this amino acid, and the, name, uh, the reason that we have that name is because there's a hydrogen in that position. Okay, so that is uh, the end of the video. Basically, again, the big thing is to learn how to be able to draw this. You might just need to practice memorizing it, um, covering it up, and drawing it again, and again, be able to draw out all the chemical structures, not just writing the names of these, although this is a good start, um, and you could put it together as long as you know what is what, but if I ask you to draw out the amino acid structure, then I want to see this whole uh, shenanigans here.